In this video, we're going to continue to look at layers and working with type and uh, introduce some additional features that are available to you in working with layers. And I reverted back to our original image and uh, copied the Bible verses uh, from the love chapter, 1 Corinthians. And, uh, you know, you're very familiar with it, I'm sure, where it says love is patient, love is kind. And what we're going to do, I just copied it and pasted it into my document here. And uh, so the first thing we want to do is actually break this up a little bit since it's long. Because what I'm thinking, just so that you have an idea of where I want to go with this, and then we're actually going to walk through it, is have the larger type like we were looking at before that said love never fails and have love never fails and in between that have all of the sentences that are related to this verse so in order to build that out first thing we need to do is break up our um, lines here and I'm just looking to keep it as similar as possible as length. You'll notice that everything is um, pushing out here to the middle because that's how it is. And actually let's turn off the background layer so it makes it a little bit easier to see. So I'm going to choose my type tool again. We'll click here. Um, and we can always adjust this later. So this is where we're at right now. Okay. And so I'm going to double click this and right now the space between the lines is 144 with 24 point type. I'm going to change it to maybe 72. And let's see how that interacts with our picture. So it's actually a little bit big still. At least this one is. See, it always protects, always trusts. always hopes oh interestingly enough it kind of looks like a heart <laughs> I wasn't planning that but it still worked out that way so we have our type here and um, we also have love never fails. So what I'm going to do with that, I'm actually going to create a new type layer. I'm going to click down here and type in love never fails. And I want each of those on their own line like before. And we're going to make them big like before and change the font. So this time I think I'm going to use a font that I like called Satisfaction. And let's make it uh, try 72 point. You notice that we're using a smaller font size now and that's because I changed the image size um, of the uh, photograph here between the last video and this one just to make it a little more easy to manage. So maybe we'll go with 92 point and put a lot more space in between them, say 160. Something like that. Now the object of the game, and actually let's make it a little bit bigger. We're not going to have those sitting on top of each other like that. They're actually going to, this love never fails is going to be ghosted back into the image and I'll show you what I mean by that in just a minute first thing I want to do is select that and change the color from black to green okay and then um, if I left mouse click and drag I can move it so that it's behind the black type so that's how you shift the stacking order of your uh, layers you just simply left mouse click and drag it to the position that you want it in okay the next thing that I can do then is change the blend mode remember we looked at those blend mode from normal to multiply 
and change the opacity from 100 down to maybe 35. We could even make it a little lower. And just to kind of show you the difference that it'll make, say we went with screen, it would actually lighten it like that. Um, hard light. Notice how it's much more green looking than if we went with multiply. Um, overlay is another one that's very popular. And actually in this case that could actually work really well. Just turn the opacity down a little bit. So you just want it to be a hint of that information. Okay. Um, the other thing we'll do, I have the font currently as Calibri. We may make that an italic. And the last thing that I want to do just to enhance this a little bit is select the phrase love never fails here at the bottom and turn that into a bold italic just so that it stands out a little bit more and maybe make it a darker green. Okay, so there's a lot of different ways that we can handle this design-wise, you know, but this is just one way of doing it. Now, another thing that we could do, um, one area that we haven't talked about yet are layer masks. And uh, I'll show you how layer mask works. Let's say that I want to create um, another rounded box like we had before and except this time I wanted to overlap the heart okay now the black was the foreground color so that's why it changed to black I'm going to increase the edges so that it's much more rounded and I'm going to change the color to I guess it isn't going to let me sample it. We'll go with like a, yeah, not that. Um, well, we could go with like a lighter version of that gold. That isn't too horrible. And uh, so let's close this window. Now, um, one thing that I'm going to do is uh, we're going to change the opacity of this. Okay. And actually, you know, I think what else we're going to do is actually change the width. I don't want the height to be affected. Right now it's 2520. Let's go to... Um, say 3000 and then actually that's probably going to be too much say 2700 and then with the move tool selected I'm just going to scoot that over now here's how layer masks work so I have this rounded rectangle right and you'll notice down here at the bottom it says effects and then um, which gives you the ability to add a layer style we've already looked at that you can also access layer styles under blending options um, but right next to it is a rectangle with a circle in it and if I click that it adds a mask uh, right now it's just a blank white box but here's how it works you can use brushes or any of the marquee tools, the lasso tools, whatever, to draw shapes. Um, and anything that is filled with black makes whatever you're masking disappear. Anything that is filled with white makes it um, makes the object solid or appear. And any variation in grayscale in between there determines level of opacity. So here let me just demonstrate what I mean by that let's take a brush okay and right now it's at 134 we'll go with that 
you want to make sure that the mask is selected and the color choices you're always given when the mask is selected is either black or white and we're going to go with black and I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so now if I paint with the black on this layer mask for the yellow box watch what happens actually let's uh, pick a new brush that doesn't have I'm gonna undo here <laughs> my brush had attributes from earlier when we were playing around with some of the other options let's see if we're good now okay so I'm gonna paint with the black and everywhere that I paint the you'll notice that you can see the heart through and actually just to make this easier to to witness I'm going to change this almost to 100% just so you can see better so now as I paint you'll notice that it's disappearing it's kind of like using an eraser except the good news is that if you blow it and you like remove too much like right there you can go back and fix it because you're working with a mask all right so I'm gonna erase this all here and then I can switch from black to white and paint the areas that I over extended back in so that it's nice and clean so you always have that ability to go in and edit the masks and get it as precise as you want it to be and this is just one way of using masks but so if I turn the opacity back down to say where it was before well let's go with 40 and we zoom out now you'll notice that the heart has this um, dimensionality to it because it's standing out from the type okay so that's one of the ways that you can really use masks to get into this design now let's say that you want to actually change the color of this the background but you don't actually want to affect the original image okay um, right next to the mask is another set of choices called adjustment layers okay and whenever you click on the adjustment layer you get a number of options um, solid color gradient pattern uh, brightness and contrast levels curves exposures a lot of these should sound familiar um, because there are also tools that are available through other options except with layers they work a little bit differently and I'll show you how um, let's say that we want to shift the color we'll use hue and saturation and it brings up a toolbox that allows me to change the color and you'll notice how the color is adjusting here okay I can turn the saturation down so on and so forth I can even colorize it with a single color if I wanted to so we have a lot of options just like you normally would with hue and saturation in this case okay but the thing that's cool about that is that if you look over here in the layers palette when I turn that off the original photograph is still there now you might also notice something else that whenever you add an adjustment layer by default it also creates a layer mask okay now why is that important because I'll show you if I come over here again with a brush and I start painting on this layer mask say where the heart is right here watch what happens notice how the image is restored to what it originally was that's because with the adjustment layers we have the ability to mask out their effects on the previous layer and they only affect whatever's underneath them okay they only affect what's on uh, underneath them directly so you notice that the type isn't being affected at all it's only the layer that 
is directly underneath. And if there's multiple layers directly underneath, then, then all of them will be affected that way. So like for instance, let me just finish this section. So for instance, if I um, moved this layer from where it is now and moved it up one notch, notice how it's now affecting the yellow. If I move it up yet another notch, it's going to affect everything underneath it. So that includes the type, that includes this layer box and so on, and also the background image. If I move it back down, those other ones aren't affected at all, and now it's only affecting uh, just the background. So it's another way of adding non-destructive editing, meaning that you're not affecting the original image at all, but still using it to control specific areas. Another cool way that you can use masking, um, apart from just using the adjustment layers, and all the adjustment layers work how you imagine that they would. I'd encourage you to experiment with them. But I'll show you a cool feature, a cool way that you can use uh, masking with type okay you can actually use it with type let's turn off all of our type here and actually let's turn off that adjustment layer and I'm going to uh, create two new words we're just gonna say love and have that on its own layer so I'm gonna click the move tool and move it up here and then um, I'm just going to type in never and then we'll move it up here now let's change the fonts um, we'll go back to satisfaction again I don't know if that one will work for what I want to do probably not so let's try the great vibes font that we were using before and I'm gonna make this really big Let's really big it more. <laughs> okay, so we have love, and then um, never. We'll make it 240 as well, and we'll make it great vibes. Okay, now right now the type is black. Okay. And you'll notice that position-wise, let's say that I wanted to have these lined up on the right. And you'll notice how the, uh, I, the way I have a position, the N is going up into the loop of the L. Okay, and let's just for the sake of making things fun, let's change the color of love to a green so that there's some definition behind the two okay and actually let's change um, never to uh, maybe this copper brown so now you can definitely see a difference between the two colors and let me zoom in here a little bit I want to show you just by using some simple layer masking tricks you can make the type appear like it's wrapping around um, the other word and I'll show you the easiest way to do it so what we want to do we have a choice of either affecting the never or affecting the love and quite frankly we can get the same result from both so what we're going to do is with never selected I'm going to add a layer mask so I'm just going to click to add a layer mask and then I'm going to hold the control key down or the command key if you're on a Mac and I'm going to click to make sure that the word love is selected okay and I want to make sure that the mask for never is also selected okay I'm going to choose a brush and it doesn't need to be this big we're actually going to make it a hard brush make it smaller and all that I'm going to do is paint where this overlap is on the top okay and just to make it easier for you to see I'm gonna choose uh, control H to hide the selection now watch what happens whenever I paint onto the mask the brown disappears just in that area right 
But look at the result. Just a simple step like that. It looks now like the green is going over top of the N and then underneath it. Okay, so just a simple masking trick like that and now all of a sudden you have a separate cool effect. And of course you can apply other things to the type like drop shadows and those kinds of things just like you can with any other uh, layer option. Like if I right mouse click and we choose blending options, you'll, it brings up our layer styles. And so I could choose a drop shadow and um, we can increase the size here a little bit move them away probably want to drop down to maybe 50 percent click OK now with these layer styles or blending options as you call them one of the things that you can do is actually copy them if you want to use the exact same one for more than one layer the easiest way to do that is to right mouse click where it says effects choose copy layer style and it, it actually tells you which ones are in use, drop shadow. Come down to or go up to where it says never, right mouse click again, and choose paste layer style. And whenever we do, it adds the drop shadow, the exact same whatever we applied to love is now applied to the word never. So that's another really cool feature about working with layers. Now let's say, let's just zoom back out here let's say that we're done that that this particular design is what we were after and we're all good and uh, we're ready to upload it to the internet but the problem is we have all of these layers uh, so the first thing we want to do is save it as a Photoshop document uh, just hit file save as and make sure that Photoshop is chosen as the document it'll have a PSD extension to it and then we can just hit save and that'll maintain all the layers okay now um, if I write or if I click on this box over here one of my options is flatten image and what that does is it takes all the different layers that exist in your document and flattens it all down into one layer just the background if you have any that you aren't using it'll ask you if you want to discard the hidden layers which normally you would so you click OK and you notice now all that's left is just background and everything is compressed down into uh, just one layer which I can then choose file, save as and maybe we want to save it as a JPEG. And uh, I'll just type in love, hit save. The quality 8 is usually good enough and we'll go with that and it's done. Now the alternative another option that you have when you're working with multiple layers is let's say that um, you have multiple parts of the image that you're wanting to work on but you have no further changes that you want to make with the area that you're working on right now so you can actually merge layers together and so to do that you select what layers you want to merge together like say we want to merge those uh, right mouse click choose merge layers and it takes all the layers that you selected and combines them into one. So now, if I were to move this, you know, all those layers are just on one layer. And you'll notice that the mask is gone now, too. So um, the mask was applied, the drop shadows were applied, all the extra add ons that I had for the individual layers were all applied, and everything was merged into one layer. Okay, so you want to be very careful whenever you use merge layers because you. Uh, you can undo it using history but you know normally you can't take it back okay so you want to make sure that um, that you're using it for a specific reason and there are some reasons where you would absolutely want to use merge layer okay but um, so that's a another cool option that we have available to us with layers